Good morning, Bitcoin Shamai, and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee Break, the show which we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and then some of the other markets which may be affecting it. Uh, we can see a lot of green out there, so we're still we're still doing well. There's still gains to be made, but maybe not as many, many gains as uh, there have been over the past couple of days. Uh, feels a little bit like the the market's taking a little breath of fresh air. So let's have a look at the uh, charts. So Bitcoin is just under eight thousand dollars and nine hundred seven thousand. Sorry, eight thousand dollars. $7,996. It's had a high of $8,093 and a low of $7,920. We've got a pennant formed on here, which is still a very bullish pattern on the short term, but you know, short term trading's for, for idiots anyway. But on a slightly longer term, we have a, a nice ascending scallop. Uh, so still in very much in a, in a bullish in a bullish pattern, and then we go a little bit further out, and we've got that nice cup and handle. So we're we're still in a, in a nice bullish bullish market at the moment. So let's have a look at the news feed. Bitcoin price primed to break eight thousand five hundred. Dips remain supported. That's okay. Um, Bit Panda announces digital trading for gold and silver. So that's interesting. There's, there's a lot of Bitcoin companies which seem to be dipping their toes in in the precious metals. SEC should stay away from cryptocurrencies, says Ron Paul. So he's bearish on cryptocurrencies. There has been a little bit of bearish news on, on, crypto, on the SEC regarding Bitcoin, which we're going to have a little look into in a moment. Tron CTO calls it quits, claims, claims Tron to be highly centralised. I would say pretty much all of these coins are centralised, apart from you know Bitcoin, obviously, Ethereum's pretty decentralized, Monero is pretty decentralized, Litecoin is pretty decentralized, the rest of them I think are very centralized. If there's any ones which you don't think are and should be included in this morning brief then just drop it in the comments below and maybe I'll see if I can include it. Litecoin, Litecoin's at $94 and it's had a high of $96 and a low of $90. It's up 3% so Litecoin's done pretty well. It's looking pretty bullish. I can't really see any defined patterns in the in the chart there, but on the on the short term, it's still looking very bullish. If we zoom out, um, good old Litecoin's looking pretty plucky. Although this is some choppy weather out there, so uh, don't do any short term trading. Well, you should never do any short term trading anyway. But it's it's although there's gains to be made now, it could it could have quite a steep drop at some point. So just be careful with your money. Put it in Bitcoin. So this is why it's where it's going to be uh, safe on the long term, I think. Although that isn't trading advice. Ethereum, Ethereum is up six percent, so Ethereum's really popped. So maybe, yeah, some of those people are taking those crumbs from Bitcoin and pumping them into Ethereum. It's at two hundred and thirty dollars. It's had a high of two hundred and thirty-two and a low of two hundred and fifteen dollars. I did say that on that longer term chart. I think it was yesterday or the day before. That out of all of them, Ethereum is looking the most bullish, which was uh, I, I didn't like to admit, but we've just had these this huge three rising valleys here, which Ethereum's clearly popped out of, and it's it's made that extra hundred. Has it made that extra hundred dollars yet? No, it's, it's still got a little ways to go to make that extra. Um, a uh, hundred dollars so maybe maybe we'll kind of take a breath breath of fresh air at 250 dollars there monero how is monero doing monero is up four percent there we go so monero so it seems like a lot of the the coins which were being a bit sluggish are now popping up um monero is monero being one of them 80 it's now 86 dollars or just just about to hit 87 dollars it's had a high of um well, we are in the high now, in fact, and it's had a low of eighty-two uh, dollars. Again, it's looking, you know, it's looking bullish. It's it's going up. Um, it, it may continue to go up, or may can may go down a little bit with with Bitcoin taking a little break. Uh, there may be a delay, a delayed, a delayed pause, and maybe dropping some of these alternative ones. So gold. Let's have a little look at gold. Yeah, gold's gold's not doing anywhere. As we've said in the past couple of shows, it's. It's got this bearish three valleys going on. Um, it's managed to, to pop up a little bit, but it's lost you know, all momentum and it's dropping again. It really should be going up considering the state of the markets. So as I said yesterday, where are people putting their money um, when they're not in the markets? That, that is an interesting uh, thing to, to analyze. The S&P 500. So let's have a look at the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is... On the short term, there it's 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 trying to make a recovery, but I'm not sure it's going to make it back into its channel. It's quite a uh, bearish 
curve going on at the moment. Let's have a look at the news feed. Stocks climbers, China data spurs, stimulus hopes, markets wrap. So, okay, so some China, some positive China data to come out. So this has affected the stock markets. US stock bounce back as trade rhetoric cools. So, okay, so if we've had a, maybe a day of chilled out rhetoric from uh, Trump and and. and and China, so maybe that's maybe that's why the stock market's recovered a little bit. It's incredibly interesting that Bitcoin slowed down on the day in which uh, the stock markets have recovered. If traders are using Bitcoin as a hedge against the stock market, then that would be interesting indeed. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin Reddit at the top there. Absolutely, don't invest recklessly. You know, invest on the long term, buy and hold. Only invest what you can afford to lose. Um, okay, yeah, this is the the main story from yesterday was the the CM, CNBC Shark Tank with uh, Kevin O'Leary. Um, we'll watch a little clip of that in a moment. Um, would this be? I don't know. So, uh, Bit, Bitcoin's the new gold on CNBC. So that's that. Yeah, that's that. I think that's very much my feeling that it's kind of taking some of the use case of gold here in the in the in the markets. Who remembers the Bitcoin Robo chart? I've revived it. Um, yeah, that's a that was a, a, a good Bitcoin. I remember the Bitcoin Robo channel thing. It's uh, it's cool. Someone brought it back. Um, Microsoft wants to protect your identity with Bitcoin. That's a story we covered yesterday. Really interesting that big companies are starting out, are starting to now use all that energy which is being burnt to secure Bitcoin to create positive tools to protect personal identity. Really interesting stuff. Uh, that's that commodity usage, which um, I sometimes uh, I think I've talked about in the past. That you know, it's Bitcoin is like a this is like the, the when, it's like when we first found gold, it's big shiny lumps sitting on the the the, the, on the top of the on the ground, and we thought they were cool, so we'd like pass them to each other, and they kind of had value, but we didn't realize they would then go on to have all these amazing commodity uses, like you know, using them in you know computers, for example. Who could have predicted that? Um, and it's very similar with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's got a whole load of commodity uses which have not been explored yet. Uh, this so this is yeah we'll have a little look at this clip. This is um, yeah on the Shark Tank on CNBC. It's disruptive technology. So if you look at it from a technology standpoint, but that that also has an odor of BS to it. It, it. it it look everything that's new seems different right in the beginning. And and I think what you've got to realize is with Bitcoin specifically, money is a belief system. So the U.S. dollar, the only reason why you and I use it is because we believe it has value. So I give you a dollar, you give me a good or service in exchange. Right. We believe that it has value. Bitcoin has value because two people who exchange it believe it has that value. And what we're seeing is the volume, right? Look at people using it. That, that's the ultimately what, what matters. What all the other crypto crap? There's lots of other coins. Uh, I, I believe Bitcoin is the king and is going to stay the king for that's a very true. long time. So I taught a class at Harvard 18 months ago that you know, young people in that class challenged me. I put $100 into something called Coinbase, mm -hmm. which is a wallet thing. And uh, you buy Bitcoin? I bought them all. I bought all the crypto crap. <laughs> I put $100 in. It's now worth 30. 30. That's a 70% loss on my crypto crap. Now, I bought them all. Mm -hmm. I think that really sucks. And I think people should understand today that the hot digital is Bitcoin. Tomorrow it could be whatever, right? Uh, again, I think that Bitcoin, the, the reason why Bitcoin is uh, getting so much attention, uh, it's the best performing asset in the last decade. Right, it's drastically outperformed S&P, uh, every other kind of uh, financial asset that's out there. And the second thing is um, the institutions are coming in because Bitcoin is actually a better store of value. It's more transparent and more. There we go. So, um, yeah, good comeback. Bitcoin is the best performing asset. He also um, uh Makes strikes some wonderful points about if you look at the the Bitcoin chart and you, you ignore the big spikes and you just look at the yearly lows, Bitcoin is consistently risen. Uh, so so yeah, so there was, uh, there was and, and then uh, it, was, it was kind of annoying that he didn't strike back on when he says that this other guy says that he bought a basket of crypto crap uh, that has gone down seventy percent. That he didn't say, well look, you know, you you bought all the all the crap coins as well. You didn't just buy Bitcoin. But I mean, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's dropped as well. Uh, the I, I think that the, the most the bullish most bullish thing to come out of this interview or no, this 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 discussion was the idea of, of Bitcoin as a hedge, a, a, a uncorrelated uncorre hedge against uh, stocks and and the traditional markets like oil and um, and now maybe even gold. You know, maybe gold's joined that lot. So when you Google USD, Bitcoin now comes up in the recommended searches. Someone so someone's posted that about when you Google USD. 
there's part of me which thinks that maybe they're in a, a, um, a search bubble there, but maybe, maybe I'll check that out later. So we've got a couple of articles here to have a look at. Uh, Floyd Mayweather and DJ Khalid escape lawsuit brought by defaulted ICO investors. So they tweeted out on a pre-mine of an ICO, uh, I think in 2017, 2018, I think it was 2017. And they were taken to court for it, and um, it didn't go through because the they couldn't prove that the investors had bought that they'd forced the the or, or sold um, the tokens directly to the to the investors. Uh, so I think it's, it's 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 a bit of a sly get out, but uh, it should it's, it's still a, a shot across the barrel for other people in the public eye who fancy making a quick buck on trying to push something like an ICO. So that's a good thing. Um, so this is Joe Lubin and Jimmy Song strike a 500k crypto bet on Ethereum's future. So hard man Jimmy Song um, has uh, uh, they've striked a bet with Joe Lubin on um, Ethereum being useful in four years time. So I think there's got to be like 10 uh, projects worth, you know, X amount per year um, of running on Ethereum in four years time. Um, and then, you know, if, if, if there if there isn't, then he gets 500k. If there is, he has to pay Joe Lubin 500k. It's, it's, it's stupid and it's, it's, it's showy offy, but um, whatever. It's a bit of drama, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I'm not sh sure why within Bitcoin land there's the, the people feel the need to make these bets, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. So Facebook hires two of Coinbase's former compliance managers. So this is obviously in preparation for them reducing their own coin. Um, which will probably be a complete disaster or hopefully at the last minute they'll realize that they should just release a side chain of Bitcoin or do something with Bitcoin but yeah, we'll see how that goes. SEC again delays decision on Bitwise and BTF, ETF, B, Bit, blah, blah, Bitcoin ETF ap approval. So this is the news that yesterday the ETF kicked the can down the road yet again on uh, approving an ETF. Um, the de one of the couple of de deadline was for, for yesterday. Uh, that also may, may, might be why Bitcoin's taking a little bit of a break. This, you know, stock market's up. Uh, the rhetoric's chilled out with between the trade war and um, and the ETF uh, hasn't has uh, the decision's been delayed. I think the decision will continue to be delayed, and we won't have an ETF for a little while. But there the, the con the continues to be mounting pressure on on the SEC to be able to to approve an ETF. So it will happen at some point. It's just a matter of question of time. Bank of France is closely watching stablecoin developments, says Governor. Um, so this is the story that the Bank of France is investigating stablecoins and thinks they're really useful. We in the Bitcoin land, we often dismiss stablecoins, um, but you know, they have some merit. I mean, why dies B money was something more of a stablecoin. It's inflation where it was more stable than, um, uh, than, than, than Bitcoin. It wasn't, wasn't deflationary. Um, so, yeah, they may have some value. It then, they then go on to say that, you know, Bitcoin uh, doesn't have any value and isn't even a cryptocurrency, which is quite a, a brave claim. Um, I, I imagine countries will have their own stablecoin type fiat currencies, but they, they will be side chains pegged to Bitcoin, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll let them get to that conclusion eventually on, by themselves. Uh, have a fantastic Wednesday. That's about it for me. Um, let's hope it's up for tomorrow. and We hope we can have our Goku meme memes tomorrow. But uh, yeah, uh, have fun and have a have a good Wednesday.